Espíritu Santo a través de la palabra fielmente predicada, que así sea. Tengo que hablar sobre el contexto histórico y filosófico de por qué el apóstol Juan habló o escribió este capítulo o las cosas que este capítulo dice, cuál es el contexto. Miren, los anticristo en el primer siglo fueron conocidos como los docetistas. Eran un grupo de líderes cristianos que aceptaron las filosofías gnósticas e hicieron un sincretismo de creencias en contra de Jesucristo y de la iglesia. Por ejemplo, los anticristos decían que los únicos hijos de Dios eran los que tenían un intelecto profundo de Dios. Ellos también decían que por tener ese ilumino, ilu, esa iluminación del cielo, eran los únicos que podían vencer al mundo por ser iluminados por un conocimiento profundo. Pero lo más pernicioso But the thing is that they, the worst part is that you used to say that the children of God, that the only children of God was an elite group or believers that were enlightened. That's why they didn't have to love their regular brothers. They didn't have to fellowship with them because they were not part of the enlightened chose or chosen ones the antichrist used to say i am a son of god because i have a deep knowledge of god and who doesn't have that deep knowledge of god is not my brother that's what they used to say they used to say i don't fellowship with them and they used to say that the only ones that could defeat the world were those group, or that elite group that had that deep knowledge of God. Then, while this was going on in the church, the Antichrist were, they brought this idea. So based on this, is that a, the Apostle John is going to respond in the first five verses of the first of John chapter five. The first thing is, the first thing that he's going to speak about is about the reality that we are children of God through Jesus Christ and not because of any deep knowledge of God. We're going to see that, we're going to see two different realities here. The first one that he's going to speak about is about the reality that we are children of God. And we're going to see two, two different ones in Christ in here that shows that we are children of God. The first one is that we have in Christ the first reality we have in him according to the verse 1 in chapter 5. It says, everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is this Christ, that person, he is born of God. Apost the Apostle John affirms the doctrines, the doctrines that was taught by Jesus Christ If we see this in St. John 4, 24, he says, the word of God says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my words and he who believes in me and belie who believes in him who sent me, he has eternal life and he will not come to condemnation, but he has passed from death to life. That's what John 3, 16 is telling us. Because in such way, God loves the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not be, don't die, but my, my, they, so they can have eternal life. That's why he affirms that everybody, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, 
who believes that Christ is the, sent, the one that was sent by God to save the world, this person is truly born of God. This means that anybody that believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the, the, the Christ, this means the one that God has sent, this person then is a son of God. If you believe that Christ has been sent by God to save you, his, your life, and if you believe in him, there, that's it. You are saved. There you have eternal life. There you are a son of God. With this re explanation, John is opposing the Antichrist. They used to say that only the enlightened ones were saved because of their deep knowledge. Not because of Christ, but because of the knowledge they had of God. But we know that the only way that men and women can get to be children of God is like John is telling us on chapter 1, verse 2 of his gospel. To all of those who received him, the ones who believe in his name, they got given me, he have made them children of God. My brothers, if it was because of the Antichrist, none of us, none of us will be children of God. But this is good, that our faith can rest on the word of God and not on what the Antichrist were saying. The word of God says, and he reassures us that all of those who belong to Christ, they are children of God the Father. All the friends, the people that are among us here, if you still are not a children of God, if you haven't been saved, today is a day that God has prepared. Today is the day of salvation. And you can believe in Christ. You can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you will be a children of God. Not tomorrow, today. You're going to live through those doors, change, freed, renewed through Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in him. It's a lie what the Antichrist were saying. <coughs> the only knowledge that you need to have is that you are a sinner and you're going to go to hell and you need a Savior. And there is no other name given to men that we can be saved than only through Jesus Christ. The only way, the only way through is Jesus Christ. And that is what God, uh, John is reassuring here. All of who believe in Christ children of God. The second reality that we have in Christ is that everyone who who loves all the one who love who love the his children for example, they they are capable of loving anyone. The first reality in Christ remember, we are everyone that believes in Christ belongs to the Father. It's a children. Not because of any intellectual knowledge, not because of any philosophy or made up truths. The reality is that in Christ, all of us are made children of God. We have eternal life. The second reality, look at this, is that John, he asserts that everyone who says they love God, God that made us, this means everyone who who love the Father, God, by obligation, by nature, but with their nature, they have to, they have to be, they are saved through Christ. That person has to love all of those that just like him have been reborn in Christ. This opposes the Antichrist when they used to say that only they love the other enlightened. The intellectual ones, the ones that have deep knowledge the, of the great God. John establishes here that the children of God, the ones that love God the Father, they have to love everyone or all the other children of God. This means that in Christ, this children or daughter or son that says the love of the Father, that daughter or son, they have to love all the other 
children of God. The John himself, he says in First of John, chapter four, verse seven and eight, beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God, and knows God. He who does not love has not known God, because God is love. Also, we see it in verse 16. And we have known and believed that the love of God, we have known and believed the love of God that He has for us, because God is love, and He who abides in love obeys in God and God in Him. Verse 20 and 21, He keeps going. If anyone says, I, am, I love God, but he hates his brother, then he is a liar. The one who do not, who don't love his brother, how is he going to love God? He, if he don't love his brother that he sees, how can he love God that he don't see? We have this commandment from Christ. Whoever loves God, also let him also love his brother. Contrary to the, what the Antichrist were saying, that we only have to love some brothers, the ones that are enlightening. Enlightening. Let me make a parenthesis. Be careful, my brothers. Maybe we don't call each other Antichrist, but I can be living like an Antichrist. Because if I select, in this church, if I select who I am going to say hi to, who am I going to fellowship with, who am I going to talk to, then I'm an Antichrist. I cannot just say hi to the Latin, and from the Latins, I cannot only say hi to the Dominicans among the Latins. And among the Dominicans, I cannot select the one that, that makes me feel good. No, it cannot be like that. I have to love all. I have to love my brother, my, my Caucasian brother John. I have to love him. I have to love my African-American brother Theo, because they are sons of God. And if I say I'm a son of God, and I don't love them, then I am saying that I am not a son of the Father. That means I'm not saved by Christ. And that is what John is saying. The Antichrist are liars. And the father of lies is the devil. Oh, my brothers. I told you, open your Bibles. Because sometimes we stand here and you think it's me talking. No, it's, this is written here. The, word, the Bible is the Word of God. And if you say you're a Christian, and if you say you're a son of God, you have to love me, even if you don't swallow me. <laughs> How many liars we are. How many antichrists we are. Because that is the life that we manifest many times as Christians. The second evidence that we love the sons of God through Jesus Christ. Paul, he already told us that to love our brothers is an evidence that we are a son of God. As he said in 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. This is where it's manifested, the children of God. This is the difference. He says, all of whoever do justice and don't love their brother, it doesn't belong to God. Verse 14, we know, we know that we have come from death to life, but we love our brothers who does not love these brothers will remain in death. If we go to First of John, chapter five, verse two, the one we're, we're going over today, John reveals two evidence, two evidences that show why who loves God has to love his brother. What are those two evidences? Let's see what it says. Verse 2. In this we know that we love the children of God. 
when we love God and we keep his commandment, how do I know that you love your brothers? How do I know that you love me? You know how I know it? Because you love God. And you love God's commitment. The first genuine evidence that a person loves others, children of God, is to love God. That's the first evidence. If you love with all your heart God, then you're going to love the other children of God. Because we have the same Father, which is God, and we are our brothers in and through the grace of Christ. And this first evidence, if overflows the second evidence. If you love your Father God, then you have to fulfill all the commandments that has been left in, that have been written for us. There is no other way to demonstrate that you love God other than by respecting and fulfilling with His commandments. As the Apostle John says, he says it in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. And this we know, that we know Him. If we keep His commandment, then He who say, I know him and does not keep his commandment, he is a liar. And the truth is not on him. <clears throat> Who keep his word, the love of God is in him. That's why we know that we are in him. Who says that he remains in God, he should walk as God. Christ walked. This evidence, they are established in such way that it's a radical way. Apostle John, if you read his letters, it's it's to re if you read if you read this letter, it's to read an apostle that it's not going to leave you any doubt or any room that for you and I to start arguing or start asking. Or we start calculating. John don't do this. <coughs> when he writes his letters, he writes it in a sure way, establishing things as a, something that he's telling you is something closed, not open for room to do any doubts. He, it's not giving you any option to me or you to say one thing that he didn't say in those letters. That's why they're radical letters. If you don't love God, you're nothing. If you don't love your brother, you don't love God. If you don't, if you love God, then you love your brother. He do not leave any room, any space to doubt, to think, to question. It's said, and that's it. If you don't do this, it's disobedience, and all disobedience is said. This evidence, they are established in a radical way. And my brothers and sisters, it's a parenthesis. If somebody don't want to accept what I'm saying, you're not, accept, you're not rejecting me. You're rejecting the Word of God. You're going to have problem with God. You're not going to grow in Christ. You're not going to have joy in Christ. You're going to have bitterness in your heart that is going to destroy you Destroy your life, destroy your family, destroy your kids, your wife, your husband. In every place where you work, everywhere you go, where you socialize. Because if you don't have love, you have hate. And if you have hate, you don't belong to Christ. That's, belong, that's antichrist. The Antichrist, they would bring in a false doctrine, doctrine to destroy it, damaging the mind of the brothers. So they, because they didn't want to follow the commandment of Christ, 
they don't want to do the, they don't want to love one another. They had a posture of, of Antichrist that was dragging all the believers to abandon the commandments of the Old Testament. And to see this, they wanted to see the commandment as something old, something that had nothing to do with the church now. And they, as, and they brought people to consider that the Bible, according to the Antichrist, that, that they were, had too many things to, to follow that was difficult. They said that the Bible was a burden also. The Antichrist used to say that to love your brother, that didn't have knowledge, the deep knowledge of God, was a brother very difficult to bear, to, to, to stand, because they didn't have deep knowledge. That's why the church could not tolerate those weak brothers. Against that false doctrine right there, John says, the apostle, that the commandment of God over love it rests in the works, the redeeming works, and the love of Christ that showed his love for us that while we were sinners, we were sinners, Christ died for us. That's why the Bible says in verse 3 of the first, first book of John, verse 3, 1 John 5, 3 says, This is the love of God that we keep his commandment and his commandment are not burdensome. They're not tiring. To love our brothers is not bad. To love God is not a burden. To hear God with obedience and to fulfill His commandment in our life is not bad. It's bad when you don't know God. It's bad it's tiring when you haven't been saved and rescued by Jesus Christ. See how much love He showed, the, the, how much love the Father gave us. That now we can be called sons of God. Because it says it in such way, God loved the world. Christ came for that genuine love of God. He gave His only Son to rescue you, to save us, to forgive us. The love of God is not tiring. It freed. It's healing. It's, restor it's a restoring love that restores you. That is the love of God in Christ. Then me, if I have Christ, then I am called to love you, my brother, my sister. Even if, 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 even if, you, if, if I don't like you, I have to love you. Why do I have to love you? Because you're my sister. You're my brother. You and I have been born from the same father. And the only evidence that I have in this earth that I love God is that I fulfill his commandment. And his commandment, according to John, is love your brother. My brothers, the Ten Commandments, they are resumed in two words, in two phrases. Loving God, the first four commandments. If you fulfill this, you are loving God. The other six, to love your brothers or your neighbors. That's what Christ says. To fulfill the commandment is to love my brother. And when you love, you, get, you are filled of that joy, of that truth. I am a son of God experiment. Why don't you experience the joy, the happiness of living in a community where we fulfill and we have the love of God. Lastly, the purpose of being a children of God is through Christ. And we have seen the reality that we are saved, son of God, and the evidence is to love God and fulfill His commandment. That is the love, the love for our brothers. And lastly, the purpose of being as children of God in Christ is first. All the children of God in Christ, they are overcomers. Verse 4 says, because all of, you, all of them who are born in God, they will overcome the world. Antichrist used to say that to defeat this world, you have to have a deep, deep, deep knowledge. 
to be a great intellectual, to have a lot of knowledge, deep knowledge of the of divine things, of, of the occult things, of mystery things. John says, no, for you to overcome the world, all you have to do is be reborn again. You have to have Christ in your life. You have to be saved. All of those who are saved or are reborn of God, they overcome the world. Amen? Amen. Because you are with God. Greater is the one with us than the one is with the world. Second thing. All of us who have their faith placed only in Christ will overcome the world. As verse 4 says. This is the great victory that have overcome the world. Our faith. This is the victory that have overcome the world, that have defeated the world. It's with our faith. First, remember, the first place, you have to be reborn. And to be reborn, you have to convert to Christ. You have to accept Christ. Once you have Christ in your life, you are an overcomer. You are, you are an overcomer in and through Christ. Once you are in Christ, you can have that faith in Him. And that faith in Him is what's going to defeat the world. Your faith placed in Christ. As Hebrew tells us, verse 12 too, place our eyes in Jesus, the maker and consumer of our faith. The author of our faith. We, he suffered at the cross. He rejected the world, but he was seated at the right hand of his father. What overcomes the world? Our faith. As First of John 2, 3, 2, 14 says, one is writing to the youth. Listen to what John is telling the youth of the first century. These are the most beautiful words I've seen in this chapter 2. And in chapter 2 of 1 of John, he tells the youth, I am writing to you because you know who is from the beginning. I have written to you, youth. He wrote to the youth. You are strong. Strong. It's not lifting weights over the night at the gym and then having your big old chest. No, that's not strong. Strong is a character. We're talking about character. That you don't, you don't give up in, the, in college. That you don't give up around your neighborhood, that nobody will come and drag you to corruption or sin and you give in like you are just a, a, a sheep to be slaughtered. No. The belief, those youth that he's talking about here in the first century, the one he's writing to, he says, you are strong. They were strengthening in the power of Jesus Christ. They were strengthened in the grace of Christ. Youth, young men that got to know Jesus. They were strengthened in Christ. And the second thing he tells them is, and the word of God remains in you. And you have overcome the evil. How did they defeat it? Through Jesus Christ. Because they had the word of God as a fundamental part of their life. Because they were walking according to these words. They believed these words. They would practice these words. They would walk with the word of God everywhere. They're the way they spoke was the word of God. Their mind was according to the words. Their conduct, how they behaved was according to the words. Not according to TikTok. TikTok make you dumb. Instagram make you dumb. This Dominican girl, they did an interview on her. And she said in this interview, that one month, one month, she earned about a million dollars in TikTok. And what does she do in TikTok? She go go we go to mirror. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying, guys. From the morning into the afternoon, people would send their money, and she would just sit there. Simple youth, weak, all philosophies of the Antichrist get to their mind. And be careful, parents, 
if you are allowing that your kids don't remain on the word, be careful if your kids are paying attention to all this weird philosophy of the world. And number three, the only way that the church can overcome in this battle of faith that we fight every day, the only way they can overcome this is believing that Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, He is the Son of God. That He believe that He we have the Savior, that we are we belong to Him, that we have Christ, and if we have Christ, we have everything. We don't need anything because I have the Savior, the Lord. With Christ, I am crucified. No longer I live, but Christ lives in me. That's why John says, who can, who can win this battle in the world? Only, verse 5 says, only those who believe that Christ is the Son of God. Is, is the, this is a biblical translation. Verse 5, no one will ever defeat this battle or this fight without believing that Christ is the Son of God. If you believe that Christ is your Savior, if you believe that Christ is the Son of God, that if you believe that Christ is the one that God sent to rescue you, to save you, the one that came to give you life and life and abundance, the one that give you new, the one that will give you a new life. If you believe in Him, you will live in this world, loving and serving the Lord, and you're gonna be an overcomer because He defeated the cross, He defeated the devil. He defeated the world, the flesh, and in Christ, you will be more than an overcomer. We are sure that no life, no death, no angel, no principles, no the present, not that what's coming can ever separate us from the love of Christ. Who defeat the world? Those who believe that Jesus is the Lord sent by Christ, by God, to save you. Today is a glorious day. So that you can come to Christ. And right there where you're sitting, say, Lord, I have never come to you or converted. I am not sure that I'm a son of God. But now I understand that it's in Christ and through Christ that I can be saved. That I can get to be a son of God. That is the best moment that you, right now so you can tell the Lord, Lord, I believe in you. I want to be saved. Make me a daughter. Make me a son of yours. Do it, Lord. And you're going to see how you're going to be more than overcomer. You're going to be saved, freed. You're going to be free today in the name of Jesus. Last week, I went to Dominican Republic. It was quickly. I went to replace a, a brother pastor, Brother Bernie's. From Florida, he's a, a Presbyterian brother, firm in the word. He suffered a. We have to pray for him. He's, he was very sick and he couldn't go to that conference. So he called me that to see if I could, I could replace him, and I went. But I had my doubts because uh, I had to preach here today. And I say, well, do I go or not go? And I went. But I always have my doubt, is this plane going to be delayed? You know how things are. So that's what happened. The plane was supposed to leave four of the afternoon to get to Miami, and then Miami had to take another one to get to calmly, to get home. And when I got early to to the airport, they started sending us uh, this some notifications to my phone, delayed, now it leaves at 4.30, delayed, now it leaves at 5.30, I say, wow, and every time I saw the board, I say, how am I going to do this connection to get home, so American, says, well, it's not our problem, it's the, the plan, you know, and it got really delayed, it had nothing, I went to argue with the lady, do something. I have to leave. I have to leave. 
they had their hands tied because they couldn't do anything with me. And there was no other planes leaving. They said, send me to New York. Send me to Newark. Nothing. They were looking at nothing. I had three women helping me. They couldn't do anything about it. I said, wow. I was to the point of, I was the cheater already. Like, uh uh-oh. I was about to call Brother John, John, I'm not going to make it. But but I said, wait a minute, why am I in trouble? Am I not a son of God? He's not the owner of heaven and earth? Can God change the world? Isn't he powerful? And I went to the bathroom at the airport. In there, I closed the door. People thought I was doing something else, and I was praying, actually. I was praying in there, asking God to help me out. When I leave this talk, the lady said, I've been looking for you. Come on, come on, come quick. Get in, get in, get in. you got to go on that plane right now. And I said, wow, here I am, and I made it. <laughs> God changed everything. <laughs> he changed everything. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord. And he's the one that overcomes the world. If you still don't have Christ, if you still are not re- too sure that you're a son of God, come to Christ today. In my brothers and sisters, this is the benefit of being a son of God. And if you are a son of God, if you love God, you love his commandment, and you love your brothers. God bless you. Father, thank you for your words. Continue to talk talking to us through the words in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.